In the previous videos, we already talked about some essential nutrients which were carbohydrates, fats and proteins. We also saw various food items that contain these nutrients in abundance. For instance, we saw that rice and wheat are rich in carbohydrates. Milk and egg are rich sources of proteins, while butter and ghee contains large amounts of fats. But is there a way that we can know for sure that these food items contain these nutrients? Well, there are some chemical tests which can tell us which food item contains which of these nutrients. And that's what we are going to do today. So our first test today is to identify the presence of carbohydrates or more specifically the presence of starch in the food that we eat. Now, I hope you remember that carbohydrates are present in two forms. The first is in the form of sugars and second is in the form of starch. Now this test is only for the presence of starch and not for the sugars. So you keep that in mind. Now for any chemical test, we need a chemical reagent, right? So for this test, we'll need an iodine solution. Now how do we prepare this? All we need to do is take a few drops of tincture iodine and mix it in a small amount of water. Now once you do that, your iodine solution is ready. Now, when we add this iodine solution to a starch-rich food item, we see the appearance of a bluish-black color. So a bluish-black color is a confirmation of the presence of starch in that particular food item. So let's go and find some food items and do this test on them. So here we have collected some food items which we'll be doing the iodine test on. The first one is a piece of bread. The second is some wheat flour. The third is some rice powder. The fourth is some minced potato and the fifth is some minced apple. I've kept the intact potato in the apple so that you don't have any confusion. Now here is our iodine solution as you can see. Now we'll be taking this dropper and pouring some iodine onto each of these food items. Wherever we get the blue-black color, that is a positive indication of the presence of starch. So let's go ahead and do it. So here I put this iodine on the bread. What do you see? Can you see the yellow color of iodine solution turning violet or blue-black instantly? So this shows that bread contains abundant amounts of starch. Let's go ahead and try it with the wheat flour. So here, I take some iodine solution and I pour it on the wheat flour. What do you see? If you give it a moment's time, you will observe that the yellow color of iodine once again changed to blue-black. So we can say that wheat also contains a lot of starch. Let's go ahead and try it with the rice powder. Once again, you can see that the color has completely changed to blue-black. And we have also learned in the topics of carbohydrate that rice contains abundant amounts of starch. Let's go ahead and try it on the minced potato now. When I put the iodine solution on minced potato, it doesn't instantly change to violet like our previous food items. But we have learned that potato indeed contains a lot of starts right so we just pour a little bit extra and leave it for some time so that the potato changes its color to blue black now for the time being we move on to the last food item the minced apples and you can see it is not showing any change of colors so let's leave our potato and apple sample for some time and see if there is any change in color later on so you can see that the potato has started to give a bluish black tinge. But there is no such color change in apples. But why is that? Because we have learned that all fruits, all sweet tasting fruits especially, contains carbohydrates, right? But the thing is that apple does not contain starch. Like I told before, this is a test only for starch. Apple contains sugars in high amounts, but this test will not tell us anything about sugars. So as you can see, apple is not uh, giving us a positive starch test. Whereas all the other ingredients over here have given us a positive starch test. So let's go ahead and see what is there next. Let's move on to our next test, the test for protein. Now for this, instead of just one reagent, you require two. 
The first one is the copper sulfate solution which you can prepare by adding a few crystals of copper sulfate in a small amount of water. Just like that, you can prepare the second which is the sodium hydroxide or caustic soda solution by adding a few crystals of caustic soda in a small amount of water. If you see, then copper sulfate solution looks blue and caustic soda solution looks colorless. Now, when you add a few drops of both these solutions to any food item and the color changes to violet, that is a confirmation that that food item contains proteins. So let's go ahead and see how it works. So what I've got here, as you can see, the first food sample I have is the egg yellow or the egg yolk. The next I have the egg white. The next one is the crushed soya bean powder. And the next is the milk. And finally, I have some crushed dal. Now here, I have my copper sulfate solution and here is the sodium hydroxide solution. Now what is the test? First, we'll take the dropper and put a few drops of copper sulfate solution in each of them and then add a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution. If the color changes to violet, that's a positive test for presence of proteins. So let's go ahead and do it. So here, we'll take the copper sulfate solution first. So I've taken a dropper full of copper sulfate first and I'm adding it in all these food items. So I've added it in the egg part, egg yellow part, here in the egg white. I'll take a dropper full and add it in the uh, soya bean. Now I'll take some copper sulfate and add it in the milk. I'll add a bit more. Okay, now we'll take final sample of dal and add some copper sulfate in that. Now, let's clean the dropper in case we have some traces of copper sulfate left. And let's take the sodium hydroxide and add it in all our food samples. So, what do you see? Do you see the violet color appearing in the egg yellow? Let me add it in the egg white as well. Just like that, when I add it in the soya bean, what do you see? You see the violet color appearing. Just like that, when I add it in the milk, you may see that the violet color is appearing. And finally, when I add it in the dal sample, you can see that within a few seconds, the violet color starts appearing. Now, if you shake each of these containers and leave them for some time, you will see nice violet color appearing in each of them. This means all the items that we have taken here, which is the yellow and white part of the egg, the crushed soya bean, the milk and the crushed dal, all of them contains proteins in them. That's great. Let's go ahead and see what we have next. Now let's do our final test, which is the test for fats. Now this is not a chemical test, so we don't need any chemical reagents for this. Instead, all we need is a blank piece of paper and the food items that we need to test. Now this test is very easy to perform. We need to take the food item and rub it all over the blank piece of paper. If the paper turns translucent, that is a positive indication that fats are present in it. Now, what is translucent, you may wonder. Well, translucent objects are those objects that partially allow light to pass through them. So, you know that naturally paper completely blocks off light, right? I mean, you take a piece of paper and put it in front of your eyes, you cannot see the light source at all. But a translucent paper will allow some light to pass through, so you'll be able to see the light source little bit faintly. So let's go ahead and do this test and see what happens. Now like I said, here I have taken some butter and here some ghee that I'll be testing for the presence of fats. Now this candle will act like my light source and here is my blank piece of paper. Now let me show you what happens when I place this piece of paper in front of the candle. Tell me, can you see the candle? No, not at all. So. Let me now apply this butter on top of the paper and let's see what happens then. So here, 
as you can see, I'm applying the butter on top of the paper. So here I have smeared the butter on top of the paper. Now let me bring it in front of the candle and tell me if you can see the flame or not. So here I bring it in front of the candle. Can you see the flame? So what do you think? Here the butter made the paper translucent, which means some light was allowed to pass, which was not possible when we did not smear the butter. This means butter positively has fats present in them. Now let's repeat the experiment with ghee and let's see what happens. So here I have another paper which is currently completely blocking off the light from the candle as you can see. Now I'll smear some ghee on top of it. So here I take some ghee and I apply it on the paper and then I will smear it on top. Now if I bring this paper in front of the candle can you spot some candle light now? Right? You can see some light coming to you. That's because this paper was completely blocking the light before, but after applying the ghee, it has become translucent, which means it's allowing some light to pass through, which means ghee contains abundant amounts of fats. Therefore, once again, we have a positive test for fats. Now you can try this test with other milk products like paneer or cheese, and you will end up with the same result. Go ahead and try it. So that's the end of it. All the tests are done. I hope you had fun watching this video. Now you go ahead and try these tests on different food items lying around in your kitchen and you see for yourself which food item contains what. For now, let's summarize what we learned. The first test that we performed today was the test for starch which involved iodine solution as the chemical reagent. When iodine solution was added to a food item which was rich in starch, a bluish black color appeared which was the confirmation of the presence of starch. The second test that we did today was the test for proteins. Now there were two chemical reagents involved. The first one was the copper sulfate solution and the second one was the sodium hydroxide solution. When we add a few drops of both these solutions to a food rich in proteins, we see a violet color which is the confirmation for the presence of proteins in that food item. The third test that we performed today was the test for fats. Now this was a physical test and not a chemical test. The test was to take the food item rich in fats and rub it over the piece of paper. If the paper turns translucent, it is a positive confirmation that fats is present in that food item.